My next guest has made trying to stop or at least curtail gun violence a central part of his 2020 presidential campaign. He's calling for a federal gun licensing system and a ban on what are called assault weapons. Joining me now, New Jersey Democratic Senator Cory Booker. Senator Booker, um, I'd say good, mo good morning, but it's not a good morning. Um, two shootings in less than 13 hours, 29 people killed, 42 people injured or wounded. Uh, what was your reaction when you heard about the El Paso shooting and then you wake up and hear about Dayton? Uh, first of all, the horror of it. Um, having been the mayor of a big city, you know the horrors of mass shootings. and what it does. And so my, first and foremost, obviously, your, your thoughts and prayers are with all of the victims, the families who've lost people, the people who now have months, years of, of recovery. But you also know that thoughts and prayers are, are not enough. And uh, I turn my attention to the person who is uh, leading this country, who is, in my opinion, in this moral moment, who is failing. And I think that at the end of the day, especially because this was a white supremacist manifesto, uh, that I want to say with more moral clarity that Donald Trump is responsible for this. He's responsible because he is stoking uh, fears and hatred and bigotry. He is responsible because he's failing to condemn white supremacy and see it as it is, which is responsible for such a significant amount of the terrorist attacks. He's responsible because he is president of the United States and has failed to do anything significant to stop the mass availability of weapons to people who intend to do harm. And lastly, he's responsible because leaders take responsibility. We are responsible for each other in this culture, in this society, and, and our president in the highest moral position in the land should be taking responsibility in this painful, difficult moment and coming forward and telling us what he will do to address hate to address white supremacy, to address the availability of guns, to address this mass violence. His talking about the cowardice of others uh, is more of a reflection of his failure to take responsibility and cowardice in a time that we need courageous leadership. Now, the, the, the screed, the, the document that the law enforcement is currently looking into about whether or not this terrorist, this white supremacist in El Paso wrote it, um, he he uses the language that we've heard from the president in terms of calling migrants coming into this country an invasion. It's in the second sentence of this manifesto or screed, uh, which is obviously something that President Trump has said. But, but the, the shooter also said that he uh, thought this way and had these beliefs before President Trump and that President Trump is not responsible. Um, I don't know how you make sense of any of this, but, but what did you think when you, when you saw that? Well, a mass murderer who's trafficking in hatred and bigotry, um, all, all, literally trying to give some kind of exculpatory uh, uh, reaction to the president. I mean, come on. Our president right now is using the same language uh, of racism, of bigotry, and white supremacy. The way this president is talking about immigrants, the way he's talking about minorities in this country, these are the words that are used by the kind of folks that, that are in the darkest corners of the Internet, and, and as we see in this terrorist attack, uh, the kind of people that uh, uh, ultimately manifest that hatred and violence. And for him not to take responsibility for that is a moral failing. And, and for him not to understand his failure to condemn it or see the seriousness, the majority of terrorist attacks since 9-11 have been white right-wing extremists. The majority of those have been white supremacists. And we have a president that not only is failing to call out white supremacy, who in Charlottesville tried to create a savagely false uh, uh, equivalency, but, but he himself is using the language of hate on a regular basis to talk about Congress people, to condemn urban places, to talk about immigrants. It, he is responsible in his language, and he is fueling and giving license to this kind of hate in our country. There's this theory, I think it's called scatastic terrorism, which is the idea of a leader using the mass media to demonize a particular group, whether it's Jews or immigrants or whomever, and then what appears to be lone wolf, individual psychotics attacking that one group, uh, where the individual attack is not predictable, but the general trend of it is predictable, 
because of the amplification of the bigotry. And it sounds like you are saying, not to be using, you're not using the clinical term of, of, of uh, scotastic terrorism, but it sounds like you are in a way holding President Trump responsible for some of these individual acts, whether it's the Tree of Life synagogue shooting or, or El Paso. Jake, I just want to continue to speak in this time with moral clarity. We, we are a nation where we, as the poet says, we are each other's bond, we are each other's magnitude, we belong to each other. And we have a president of the United States who is savagely fraying the bonds of our nation by speaking consistently words of hatred, words of division, words of demonization and demagoguery. He is fueling a climate that is tearing at the fabric and fueling an environment where, where, where white supremacists and, and people who have ill will are, are finding more and more license to strike out against the vulnerable, to strike out against the immigrant, uh, to strike out against, quote unquote, the other. This is a moral moment in our country, and our president is failing in, in his moral role to unite this nation, to heal, to bring about the best uh, of humanity in America. And so he is responsible for what is going on and is doing nothing, nothing to stop the carnage and the chaos. Nothing in terms of gun legislation, nothing in terms of, 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 of taking steps against white supremacy that we should take, nothing in terms of the kind of rhetoric that elevates, that brings together, that bonds. Instead, he is ripping at our nation. He is tearing people down. He is tearing us apart. This is a moral moment, and he is failing this nation. And what we saw in this last 24 hours, he must be held responsible. Let's talk about the bold, ambitious, uh, overreaching, depending on one's point of view, I suppose, uh, gun control plan that, that you have said you would pursue as president. Um, as you know, the Senate has been reluctant to take up any gun legislation in the wake of mass shootings, uh, including after 20 little children were killed at Sandy Hook, uh, whether it's universal background checks or red flag laws. What are you proposing that you think you could actually get through the Senate? And I'm sorry to, to, to put it, because you're talking about morality, and I totally appreciate that on, on a morning like this. But there also is the, you know, there's morality, and then there's what can get through the Senate. Well, again, remember, Strom Thurmond, longest filibuster in Senate history, was just try to stop civil rights legislation. But we were this nation that when people died, whether it was a shirt waist factory fire, we changed laws in the Senate in response to women throwing themselves out windows, dying to their death in those, in those sweatshops. We were a nation that overcame filibusters in the Senate when four girls were killed in a bombing. We responded. And so now here we are in a moral moment again. And, and, and it's not for girls or the horrific deaths of women. This is mass shooting after mass shooting. Before we can even bury our dead, another one happens. And so you want to know about a president that will take responsibility? Don't tell me what can't get done. I, the Senate is a replete with a history of things that could not pass but then did. What we need is a leader who is going to have a bold and ambitious plan. And let me tell you, I make no bones about it. I challenge everyone in the Democratic primary race to, to have, to join me on common sense things like gun licensing. If in this country you need a license to drive a car, you should need a license to buy and possess a firearm. States that have done that have seen dramatic drops in shootings. And the problem is right now, as we saw recently in Gilroy, and, and, the, and Gavin Newsom spoke to this, the governor of California, that we now have a reality where because laws are actually getting strict in some states, the way these mass shooters get their weapons to go to the neighboring state with less laws. We need to stop this patchwork of laws in our country that endangers people everywhere. We need to have a federal policy of gun licensing, of, of, of one handgun a month, of the kind of things I put out in my plan that are evidence-based, that will drive down shootings, will end this nightmare of the kind of carnage we're seeing. And I challenge every Democrat to, to stand up in this moral moment and say that I will do what is necessary to protect folks. And by the way, we will. how will I get that done? The same way we've gotten big things done all the time. 
is having leaders, number one, are willing to stand up and put forth a bold vision, a dream, uh, uh, where this country should go, and then muster the moral majority, muster the, 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 the majorities in Congress to get mm -hmm. it done. That's the kind of leader I'll be.